province of Ontario is approaching a generational opportunity to change the way police services are delivered to its citizens. This comes at a time when police budgets are stretched thin and public confidence is even thinner. In the wake of high profile shootings, beatings, and other inappropriate displays of force, police in Ontario are facing unprecedented internal and external challenges. When I read about police incidents across the province, I frequently arrive at the conclusion that the individual officer or the group of officers involved responded poorly. My analysis of these incidents comes from my years as a defense paralegal and also my years of experience as a border services officer with the Canada Border Services Agency. As a defense paralegal, I've come across many cases in which police response was heavy-handed or inappropriate given the situation. As a border services officer, I've worked alongside many police forces and I've received training which closely resembled police training in areas such as defense tactics and de-escalation. I've also had the privilege of applying that training with many past, present, and future or aspiring police officers. So, how can Ontario's police services rise to the challenges which lie ahead? The first stage where change can be affected is the recruitment process. The stated minimum educational requirement to become a police officer in Ontario is a secondary school diploma. That standard of education is just far too low for a position as great of authority as a police officer. When considering the complexity of the job, the salary, and the position of authority, officers need more training than that. Even a two-year college program is insufficient for field duties today. Given the increasingly complex number of scenarios a police officer may encounter in the field, they need to be trained to deal with mental health, drug addiction, youth issues, cultural studies, and of course the traditional law enforcement. As Ontario cities grow larger and more diverse, officers are going, to have, are going to encounter these situations in the field, whether they like it or not. I would propose that uh, at bare minimum, a four-year program of study at a post-secondary institution, whether it be college or university, be the benchmark for becoming a police officer in this province. Once the recruitment's done and our police officer out in the field, it's essential that we have a wide range of support tools to ensure that policing is done as effectively and efficiently as possible. These tools are both institutional and technological. Previously, I mentioned that officers should receive training in areas such as mental health, addictions, social work, and youth issues. They should also have, issues to, they should also have access to specialized information and specialized workers in those areas so that they have the option of diverting persons with specific needs away from police intervention and the criminal justice system. If a social worker is present at the scene and providing the adequate treatment for an issue, officers are free to carry on their, their duties elsewhere and an individual may avoid going to jail. These ideas are based on the hub model. The hub model is a system that's been employed in Scotland for a number of years now with great success. One of its main advantages is an increased emphasis on collaboration across multidisciplinary agencies. This multifaceted approach to community policing has, uh, has shown that uh, there's been a greater attention to closely tailoring police response to a specific situation as opposed to greeting a situation with brute force. Technological solutions can also ensure that police officers are fully equipped to effectively enforce the law. The Waterloo Regional Police Service, for example, optimizes police resources through a program called Managing Patrol Performance. This is a computer program which defines patrol zones based on demand for police services, and then it creates geographic zones of equal police demand. The program can calculate how many officers are required to meet or need to meet or improve police goals in any given area. Results to date have shown shorter response times for incidents, a greater distribution of specialized services, an improving balance in officer workloads, and more consistent policing based on the needs of specific neighborhoods. Technology can be used to optimize policing and make the most of the budgets which are already in place. Technology isn't just needed for enforcing the law, though. It can also be used to increase accountability and oversight. One example of this is video cameras. Video cameras are a great tool for increasing oversight and accountability. If you have cameras mounted in officers' vehicles or mounted to their vests, it helps record any incidents that officers are involved in. In the event of any enforcement action or use of, use of force incident, the video evidence would help clarify any discrepancies and expedite any legal or disciplinary proceedings, if any. The presence of cameras would also remind officers and the general public that their actions are being monitored. The benefit to the legal system and boost of public confidence would make the endeavor worthwhile. On the topic of accountability, Ontario's legislation and oversight institutions must be strengthened as well. 
One glaring issue that reflects the lack of police accountability in Ontario is the issue of suspension with pay. Currently, Ontario is the only province in the country which allows officers to stay on the payroll whilst they are suspended. This shows a lack of accountability. Suspension with pay does not inspire public confidence. In fact, it shows, it shows that uh, there are very few penalties for whatever actions uh, an officer may conduct. The Police Services Act of Ontario must be amended to remove this outdated practice. Ontario's three oversight bodies have been starved of financial and legislative support for too long. Between the Special Investigations Unit, the Office of the Independent Police Review Director, and the Ontario Civilian Police Commission, there has been a lack of transparency and accountability for decisions. Each institution needs to be clear and needs a more powerful mandate in, in order to reduce overlap and assure Ontarians that their police will be held accountable for their actions. In summation, my idea for supporting effective policing in Ontario rests on three key pillars. Continuous training, technology, and accountability. Rigorous training and education, both prior to recruitment and then during field activities, ensures that our officers are well equipped for any scenario they may encounter. With adequate training, they can conduct themselves in a manner which reflects well on them and assures the public that the police are able to handle any situation. Technology can help optimize police services and maximize tight budgets. This helps to assure the public that the police are reliable and that their tax dollars are being well spent. Finally, increased oversight helps reassure Ontarians that police will be held responsible for their actions and that injustice will not go unpunished. All of these factors contribute to public trust, and the harmonious government of Ontario must be based on a solid foundation of trust. Police reform is essential to Ontario's growth as we must be able to harmoniously govern ourselves in order to progress through the next 150 years. I thank you all for taking the time to listen to my vision for a better Ontario. I hope that you will all carefully consider the role of police in your community and encourage your legislators to impose measures for improvement. Thank you.